Good afternoon. May I have your attention as we begin our ceremonies in honor of our veterans on this Memorial Day 2022. At this time, Commander Mark Below will lay the wreaths on the monument behind me and also our newer Spanish American monument to my right. Commander. And it is wonderful to see so many people come out today. I want to give some <coughs> official greetings to the uh, Naval Junior ROTC program right here in the town of Oxford who are here to celebrate with our veterans and to honor and recognize those who have passed in the line of duty. We also have both of our Vietnam uh, War Memorial Veterans uh, chapter uh, that you will see uh, flanking um, our veterans today. We have our commanders from both posts, the American Legion and the veterans of foreign wars. We also have our police department. We have our Girl Scouts. We have our band from our school. All very simple, simple gestures of trying to keep a tradition of honor and recognition alive. At this time, we also have official greetings uh, from several members of the Board of Selectmen. 
Uh, we have several new members uh, to the Board of Selectmen, and I would welcome uh, Mr. Robert King to extend the first greeting at this particular war memorial. Mr. King. Thank you, Tom, Madam Town Manager. I'm uh, extremely honored to have the opportunity to speak today. Many years ago, my grandfather served in Korea, and the only reason I know about that is through my mother, because his service was such that he didn't like to talk about what he'd seen and what he'd been through. And I know that that's a common experience also for the veterans of the Vietnam War. I think it's important for us all to remember that the service of each individual is an individual responsibility, an individual honor. We must um, take this time to really think about the sacrifices people have made. I'd like to say that Selectman Moriarty couldn't be here today because he was at a memorial for one of his that passed recently. And we must also remember that the sacrifices of the battlefield sometimes happen after the battlefield. And I'd like for us all to take a moment right now to, to think about that. I think that it's important that we take today also to show our thanks to the families and the loved ones. It was the nature of my service that I had to spend a lot of time. I wasn't there for a lot of people in my life so that I could serve my country. And I suspect that that's the same for a lot of the other veterans in this crowd. And um, I'd just like to say thank you very much to all who've served. And thank you very, very much for everyone who came out to be supportive today so that the people who served in Vietnam and Korea can see how much that their service is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman King. Uh, the next uh, invited speaker is also a new member uh, to the Board of Selectmen, but no stranger to the town of Oxford and has lived here for many years. Uh, Selectman Amy Frick, I'm going to ask to come here to extend a few words. She will also be speaking at the American Legion Post, but for those who may not make that trajectory, I know she wanted to uh, address everyone along the parade route, so Selectman Frick, I'd ask you to come up and say a few words. Today we remember all the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country, but we should also take a moment to remember the sacrifice of the families, spouses who lost their soulmate, kids who are growing up without a parent, parents who are growing older without a child, and all their friends and family who miss their love and laughter during the holidays and summer barbecues. My family, like many others, knows this pain. My grandfather was a lieutenant commander in World War II who led a squadron of spotter pilots off the USS Philadelphia. He was shot down and killed in the Battle of Sicily in 1943. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman Frick. Uh, both of the selectmen who have spoken have indicated how important it is to remember those uh, who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Um, as I waited the parade uh, to begin, a woman came up to me and was uh, reflecting on the monument behind us, in particular on the monument to the right, the Vietnam War Memorial, where you have not a lot of people uh, inscribed there, uh, but you do see a name. Um, you see a name of Ronald Granville, and uh, his sister is here today, Rhonda Granville, uh, who said that it was really um, an incredible thing uh, to witness the fact that the town made sure that he was not forgotten. Today we are going to continue to celebrate Rhonda. Uh, we're going to make sure, yes, let's give a round of applause to Rhonda here. Thank you, Rhonda, for being here and sharing that story with me. She misses him very much. Um, as we all pause to think about what this day means, um, I want to just remind people that we will be making several stops. Uh, one of the things that we every year struggle with is getting all of our equipment 
over to the World War I mo monument while our uh, veterans are, are baking in the hot sun. Uh, someone came up with the idea that we would do the speech for World War I here, but we will do the official uh, laying of the wreaths and the gun salute at World War I monument, which is diagonally across from here, which the town recently restored um, in the middle of COVID. I've been asked to um, just give greetings on behalf of the World War I monument. Uh, it was brought to my attention by uh, selectmen that uh, we had, in particular selectmen said, that we had a monument that was deteriorating. And both he and Terry Cummings had made it abundantly clear that we needed to do something, something to continue to honor the memory of those who died in World War I. And there are significant a significant number of names on that beautiful bronze plaque, which because of those two gentlemen, Selectman Sad and also our honor guard, uh, Chief uh, Terrence Cummings, that monument is brand new with the exception of the beautiful bronze eagle and the plaque. It will go into generations and not be concrete that will deteriorate, but solid granite that will stand the years of time. For all the young people here, World War I was an incredible battle that should be remembered because of the significant number of lives that were lost. It was a war that was started in Europe because of an assassination of an Archduke. Somehow, the United States you know, joined forces with Great Britain and France and uh, even Russia to fight as an allied force against the central powers of Europe. And when it became abundantly clear that the leader at that time was Germany for the Central Powers that they were losing after four years of fighting in trenches, you'll hear oftentimes veterans talk about the no man's land uh, in World War I. That's where men were living in trenches for years, years, and perishing at an enormous rate. The no man's land was in between the trenches for the allied forces and the central forces. When you see people with a poppy, you even see little rascal who's part of our contingent today with a poppy on him. That poppy is because of the remembrance of World War I veterans. The armistice was signed on November 11th, 1918, and that is the day we continue to memorize and memorialize our veterans who perished during that time period, but for all of veterans who were actively fighting. And that is now known as Remembrance Day or Veterans Day in this country. All I can say is that through the solemn acts of raising a flag, s silently saluting and saying a prayer, we are making sure we don't forget. And we are not gonna forget today as we do our gun salute and our laying of the wreath. Finally, I will close with comments that it isn't the wounded that is the greatest casualty of war. It isn't the death, believe it or not, that's the greatest casualty of war. The greatest casualty of war has been said to have been forgotten. That is the greatest casualty of war. When people do that ultimate sacrifice, it is incumbent upon all of us that enjoy the freedoms that have been left for us not to forget. And we won't forget in the town of Oxford, and we salute those in World War I, and we salute all of the veterans who've paid that ultimate sacrifice today. Through remembrance, you will not be forgotten. Thank you.
I will ask Commander Below to begin the ceremony with the laying of the wreath. I'm Jen Callahan, the town manager, and we have uh, been stopping at our, all of our war memorials, and uh, we have invited guests uh, to speak. Some of our local officials have given some wonderful, heartfelt uh, messages to the town. Uh, today, we're in front of the town's biggest dedication to veterans, and that is this building. This building is a dedication to our war heroes. Uh, and a few weeks ago, we had dedication of the beautiful, a rededication of the beautiful Civil War plaques that are inside these doors. I invite you to go see them. They're quite remarkable. And once again, a tribute to our veterans. At this time, I would like to ask the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Norman LeBlanc, to come forward and speak to you today with a very um, important message, particularly about our World War II veterans, and our veterans in general. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Pearl Harbor, D-Day, the Battle of Iwo Jima, the European Theater. These are just four major events during World War II that took place. It took so many lives, including several members of Oxford. Today we are here to honor and remember our fallen veterans who gave their lives to defend and protect our many freedoms. We memorialize them with a parade, speeches, flags, and moments of silence. But I can't help wonder if that's enough. Are we doing enough to recognize these men and women who fought for our freedoms? Are we giving them recognition that they truly deserve? Are we taking advantage of the freedoms they so valiantly fought for and died for? Was their death in vain? For example, freedom to vote. One man, one vote. Recently we had a town election which only 8% of our registered voters exercised their right to vote. 92% of our citizens chose not to participate in this exercise and this right. Did our veterans die in vain? The freedom to participate and determine what type of community we live in is a privilege that we offered due to our veterans. Not even 1% 
of our registered voters often attend town meeting? Did our veterans die in vain? Are we using our freedom of speech to respectfully debate the issues that we face today to reach a conclusion that serves the greater good? Or are we using our freedom of speech to malign and gossip about our neighbors? Did our veterans die in vain? Are we using our freedoms to become involved as members of our community by joining local committees and boards to work with the youth of our community by becoming a scout leader or a baseball coach? We've all heard the phrase, use it or you lose it. This holds true with our freedoms. If we don't use our freedoms by not participating, we will lose them. As we spend the rest of the day spending time with our families and friends, I ask you that we all take a moment to reflect on how we can individually and collectively show gratitude and thanks to our veterans for their service and sacrifices they have made for us. Let's give thanks to the greatest generation. Let their lives not be in vain, but a reminder of the freedoms we still have that we can still participate in. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman LeBlanc. The parade will continue onwards to the American Legion Post. We ask you to continue to salute our veterans. Tell a veteran today, thank you. And we thank you for coming out and participating as we walk onward to the American Legion Post. Thank you. I have um, our honor guard, I'm sorry, to the right of me who would like to say a few words and he has uh, a presentation to make. Terrence Cummings. It's still morning. Good morning, everyone. Each year, the Girton Trophy Company and the Amer North, whatever we are. Oxford Memorial Honor Guard present the award to the family of a veteran that has done an enormous amount of work for the town of Oxford. This year, we present the Joseph V. Girton Memorial Award to the family of Daniel G. O'Halloran, longtime veterans agent. If Mrs. O'Halloran is available, we'd like to present this. I, I do not believe she made it today, but this will be presented to her. Is that? Okay. Who's that? Uh, would uh, so, uh, Chairman uh, Selectman LeBlanc come forward to take this, please? Again, uh, so many veterans have done a lot for this town that uh, it is hard to pick, but uh, this year we have for Daniel O'Halloran. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of the O'Halloran family, I am uh, happy to accept this award. I knew Danny for many years. He was a good man and uh, was very much involved in uh, working with the town to make things better. So congratulations to him and his family. 